wants to go to Iceland. Hi ladies, it's Erin and welcome back to my channel. Through my channel, Busby Style, my goal is to help busy women just like you who are juggling life over 40 look like you have your act together even if you don't. Today I'm gonna help you plan a trip to Iceland, maybe a place you're interested in traveling to, maybe you're just curious about what Iceland is like, or maybe you're wondering what the hell was Erin and her family doing going to Iceland? Are they crazy? First thing I wanna talk about is how to get there. We happened to fly Icelandic Air. Our airfare was very affordable and Icelandic Air was wonderful. I would highly recommend the airline. We loved it. Where to stay? We decided instead of a traditional hotel, we decided to do Airbnb because as a family of four, we need stuff. Like I need space, I need bedrooms, I need kitchen. If you are looking at an Airbnb apartment in Reykjavik, that's the main city in Iceland, I would highly recommend you look for two things. Number one, some place that's very close to the city center because you wanna be able to walk to the city center and you don't wanna to have to walk for blocks and blocks and blocks because it is cold in Iceland. Two. You want to find a place with underground parking. You don't want to be getting out of your car with all your bags or groceries or anything else and walking around in the weather. In terms of renting a car, make sure that you rent a car with either all wheel drive or four wheel drive, and then you want the spikes in the tires. Now let's talk about what to pack. So it depends on what time of year that you're going, but we went in November. So I would say if you're going anywhere from November to February, even maybe March, you're gonna to wanna to pack for sure a really heavy puffer coat. Now I know puffer coats aren't always the prettiest coats, but they're absolutely the warmest coats. You know, you can do a wool coat, but it's just not nearly warm enough. I would do a snood or a infinity scarf, not a regular scarf. It's so windy there, you don't want things like flapping around. Snow boots with traction, so it's not enough to have a waterproof boot that's warm, it needs to have traction, treads on the bottom for sure. And you can do a crampon. What the hell's a crampon? Is she talking about a tampon? No, a crampon is like chains for your shoes. You know how you can put chains on your tires? Well, you could do the same thing for your shoes and boots. Those are gonna be handy when you're visiting some of these tourist attractions and you're going on these pathways that are ice covered and snow covered. You don't wanna slip and break a hip in Iceland. You definitely need to bring warm socks. I loaded up on warm wool socks at Target, you know, the kind that's not itchy, that are soft. Those were wonderful and I would highly recommend those. You've gotta have some light layers. You need to have at least a couple sweaters, for sure, that are warm and also not so bulky because again, you're gonna be layering on that puffer coat. I also had one pair of waterproof booties that I wore on the plane there and back so I had my snow boots and my black booties. So I don't think you need to bring much more than those two pairs of shoes with you. In terms of pants, I brought a pair of leggings that are very warm. I also brought a pair of jeans that do not have holes in them. They're not distressed because again, you don't want any wind getting in through those holes. You also want to think about maybe bringing an adapter plug with you because it's Iceland and they don't have the same voltage that we have. So just make sure if you're bringing any electronics that you bring that adapter and that you also only bring electronics that can handle their voltage. Okay, now let's talk about what to do in Iceland. First, Northern Lights. At first when we saw them, we thought it looked like a cloud strip because it is a little bit more white than you think. It always looks really green in a picture, but in person it looked a lot more white. But it does, it dances around a little bit and it changes so quickly. You know, it's so prominent one second and the next second it's, it's gone. So I guess that adds to the mystique and the magic of the lights. They're there one second and poof, they're gone the next. So it really does feel special when you see them. If you do want to see the Northern Lights from Reykjavik, there is a lighthouse that's just on the outskirts of Reykjavik called the Grotta Lighthouse. And that is a wonderful spot to see them. That's where we saw them. There's not a lot of light pollution, so you really get a good look at the lights. The next thing I would suggest doing while you're in Iceland is going to see some ice, a glacier. So in one of the glaciers, they've carved out a tunnel where you could go into the glacier, 
you drive out to the cave on this monster vehicle that you've never seen anything like before and walk through this tunnel. It was really cool. I loved that experience. My next recommendation would definitely be to go to the Blue Lagoon, a giant nature-made hot tub, essentially. It is full of silica, which makes the water a beautiful light shade of blue, this like magical shade of blue. And then the steam coming off the water with the snow in the background, it is stunning, so gorgeous. They do provide most things, but I would consider bringing a towel if you don't wanna rent one. They have conditioner and shampoo there, so don't worry about that. For me, that was a really magical place and that is a must, must see for sure. My next recommendation would be to and go see the Black Sand Beach. The black sand is made from lava. So over time, you know, the volcano erupted and the lava hardened and then it formed rock and then the rock disintegrated and it turned into more like little tiny rocks that looks more like sand. So that is the Black Sand Beach. It is gorgeous. And again, unlike anything you've ever seen in your life. However, be careful while you're on the black sand beach because they have sneaker waves. That's what they call them. That will literally like jump out of the sea and grab you and pull you in. A lot of people have died on this beach. No joke. So just be really careful about that. Don't let your kids anywhere near that water. We just stayed really far away from the shoreline and we were fine, but it was so beautiful and so wonderful. And I just, I just enjoyed that beach so much. While you're on your way to the Black Sand Beach, you will pass a waterfall that you will see on your left-hand side that is just unreal. That waterfall is called Skoga Foss. You won't be able to look at it long if you go because it is so cold, you can't even believe it. The mist coming off the waterfall forms an icy layer on the ground and if it hits you, because it turns into ice the second it hits the air, then it feels like ice pellets hitting your skin. So it's very cold, <laughs> but definitely worth seeing. It's so majestic, so gorgeous, and so surreal. The last day we wanted to go see a geyser and then another waterfall called Gulfus. That's all part of what they call a golden circle tour. The geyser was something I felt we could have skipped. We stood there for as long as we could tolerate in the weather and we saw a couple bubbles coming out of the earth. It's neat, but I didn't see like this big dramatic. <laughs> However, the waterfall was unreal. It looks fake. It looks like something you'd see in maybe like Lord of the Rings, you know, something like Avatar. You know, it's, it was just so breathtaking and gorgeous. Those are some of the highlights from our trip and what I would recommend you do on your Icelandic adventure. All of that is doable within four or five days. If you're aggressive, if you wanna take it a little slower, probably five or six days. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the food. Because Iceland is an island, there's a lot of fish. So if you don't like fish, you know, you're probably not gonna love the restaurants or the food. But I think that the meals that we had that were really good, the only thing I would say about the food is that it's incredibly expensive. So a typical entree was around $50, yeah. 50. For us, a family of four, we had two nice dinners. Both of those dinners were between three and $400 for the whole family. It's a lot of money. So that's why we mostly cooked if we could. What was kind of funny that we saw on the menus in a lot of the restaurants was they had puffin and whale. Puffin is like a little bird that looks sort of like a penguin. So my husband did order the puffin and he was like, try it, try it, it's so good. I'm like, no, puffins are way too cute to eat. I guess that would be like an Icelandic specialty or delicacy is puffin, puffin and whale. The currency is Icelandic krona. You do not need to worry about transferring your money because every place you went took credit cards. So I would suggest just using your credit card everywhere you go. The language, what do they speak? They speak Icelandic. You don't need to know a single Icelandic word because they all speak English. They all speak perfect English. So don't worry about learning Icelandic phrases. Lastly, I wanna talk about the climate. So what I didn't know about Iceland, I knew that it was gonna be icy and snowy and cold. What I didn't know is that it is the third windiest place in the whole entire world. We experienced that a lot. And one of the sites it was close to the Black Sand Beach in Vic. There's this natural stone arch over the water. We went out there as a family and there was literally a point where I was clutching Elizabeth 
and I'm moving around like this and I really thought that we might blow away and I am not exaggerating. It felt like hurricane force winds, like must have been close to 100 mile an hour winds. So my husband swooped in and put us behind this like sculpture that was there that was blocking the wind a little bit. And then he thought it was awesome. So he was like standing out in the wind and I watched him and he's close to 200 pounds, six foot two. And I watched him like doing this. Like it was like he was surfing in the wind. So it is crazy windy, like beyond any kind of wind you can ever imagine unless you've lived through a hurricane. And that was something I hadn't really planned on. So even though the air temperature isn't that cold, with the wind and the wind chill, it feels like the coldest place you've ever been in your life. And again, I grew up in the Northeast and I know cold. I've experienced negative 50, but nothing like this because the wind is so intense, like stinging through your, your clothes. So. That gets back to what to pack and being smart about packing. This is a time when you really put function over fashion and make sure that you pack really, really warm things so that you're prepared and you can enjoy it because I really did feel like I was prepared. I had the right layers, I had the right coat, I had the right hats and mittens and warmers and boots and everything and that made it so much more enjoyable because if you're cold the whole time, you're not gonna enjoy your trip. We asked the kids when we got back whether they had more fun in Japan or Iceland and they said definitely Iceland. So we all loved it so much. We all thought it was such a fun adventure. I think Iceland is stunningly beautiful. There are no trees anywhere, so everywhere you look is just ice and snow and mountain. And it's just, again, surreal, unlike anything you've ever seen. I would highly recommend going. I think if you have a spirit of adventure and you like to see things you've never seen before, that you will really, really love this trip. Let me know if you guys have any questions at all. Just comment below or you can email me, erin at busbystyle.com and I will post a blog over on the website to busbystyle.com with more pictures and information for you guys. I'll put links to the things I talked about below to help you if you are planning a trip. Maybe that would be helpful too. Thank you so much for going on this adventure with us. And again, let me know if you have any questions and I will see you next time. Bye.